discussing it with my daughter and and the idea of asking her to leave her school and all her friends and I just I felt like I just all these fears around it just seemed so real and I felt like it wasn't like it would just be very very hard thing to do to ask her to do that and and I did feel like I would be doing that to her and, and it's just really up for aware, an awareness right now and a lot of I guess fears around it so I thought I'd just put it out there and let you speak to it yeah yeah when you go on the spiritual journey and you start to follow the prompts and take the steps and everything for yourself you know you will find that you do bump up against this idea of of what will the steps that I take impact on others and you know of course it's going to seem to go that way because the very belief in others and the belief in self and others is at the core of what the ego is so so the unwinding of that is you take the steps inward you know those things will get flushed up into awareness I think to the extent that you start to realize that you really want to kind of tune in as you're even talking to your daughter and working with your daughter tune in and kind of come to a joining in mind on this because she will seem to have her beliefs which really are just reflections of, of your own and, and preferences and bondings like you mentioned and so forth and then as you go much deeper it's really an opportunity to join in the miracle I have one friend um, Donna who actually linked up with her daughter and linked up and linked up and as her daughter would go through school um, she started to tune more into her daughter you know reflecting the wanting to have miracles as the center of her life and and be the core of her life and then and then them joining together on that and even bumping up against teachers and guidance counselors and so on and so forth uh, some very interesting parent teacher conferences where she decided to totally align with her daughter and what her daughter with her and then would go in and and it would seem like the teacher was completely opposed to what the daughter and the mother were joining on and so on and so forth and it took a lot of faith to kind of continue on holding on to that as well and it's that just is very similar to the spiritual journey because as you have doubts about who you are those we'll call them self-doubt thoughts are reflected in the world because the world is nothing more than, than a projection of the mind of consciousness so you do have to face those things so you can see where you're kind of heading closer and closer to more of these heart-to-heart -heart talks and heart-to-heart -heart joinings where you just pay attention and see where you have a hesitation where you have a fear arise where you have a, an embarrassment maybe arise um, because as long as you know you're feeling a charge with anything then then that's where the the point comes in you, it comes to a self honesty how am i feeling about this you know you you have a strong calling but wherever you have a charge like well I don't want to force my daughter to do anything or I don't want to make it more difficult for her and so on and so forth that's where you're going to start to bump up to against these thoughts and beliefs that you still are holding within your own mind your own consciousness uh, once you get to the point where you know it's it's all the same where it's just this big play this big skit it's all your mind and everything such a lightness and there's such a joy and I find such a playfulness that comes in um, and, and every day there's this, there's laughter there's joy there's playfulness today I couldn't help it I was in looking at my computer and and I, I read I was again going to my emails and it said um, greatest basketball shot in history recorded and I thought okay so I clicked it on and sure enough they was some I used to coach kids basketball and these kids it looked pretty much like like the team I had they're out there it was it was actually a, at a Christian 
Baptist or a Christian uh, school, and and the one kid was throwing it in half court, and he took, the guy dribbled, passed it over. This big guy, who's good foot 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 and a half taller than the other kids, just he was way far away from the basket. He just caught the basketball and he turned completely away from the basket and threw the ball over his head completely with no sight at all of it. And I did it slow motion. I could just see the biggest grin on his face, almost like he knew the secret of the universe. He couldn't wait to get his head on the ball. Big kid. And he just, big chubby kid, he just took it and he just, as soon as he caught it, he just went, and I stopped, I did a freeze frame, and I said, look at his face. He was just like total glee and joy. He looked like Santa Claus, just heaving his whole sack over his head. And the thing went, it went all out. He had nothing but net. I mean, this was a long, this was, he was out in their half court. He just received and threw immediately with the biggest smile on his face. And then I just, and all the reactions of the kids around him and everybody would go on like this, their eyes. And one guy, little kid was just like going like this and the opposition. And then I was this, I, a 40, 45, 49 second clip. And so I watched it. I had to bring, I kept replaying it. I said, Look at this freeze frame shoulder. The kid doing the shot, I said, this total miracle. And it was just, in the total glee, miracles are involuntary. I mean, he just got the ball and he flung it and it swished it. And, it. and then they all, everybody piled on the, people piled on and from the stands and everything, almost like it was a buzzer beater. You could hear something like it was maybe near the end of the game. And we just watched it. Then the guy who, who was filming it, he was like going, you could hear his commentary because it was, he had a, He's like going, look at that, I got it, he just threw it up there, I got it on film, I got it on film. They pile on the thing and then he goes, he goes, I got it on video. <laughs> I got it on video. It was almost like a reflection, like, I got it on the film, which was a reflection, the film was his whole mind. And as soon as he said, I got it on the film, the opposing coach, who was in red, and one of the players in red, turned and pointed straight at the camera right up into the camera. And I went, look at the reflection there. The guy who is a miraculously recorded it. I got it on film. And then as soon as he said, I got it on film, two, one, two, then three, four, and then five. Five faces. It reminded me of like Henry Jaglum kind of uh, movie, you know, where he says, what if this is all a movie? What if I'm making a movie? What if there's a camera up in that corner and all the characters all turn and look up there? It's one of these surreal moments that Jaglum puts in his movies. You know, or the Truman Show. It's all for me. It's all for me. You know, like when he, when he, when he's in the car and the, it starts coming through the radio thing, and he starts t to get the feel like it's what if it's all me. So I was like there, going like, oh, look at this. And so I, I got you in, and then I go in the kitchen. Laverne and Andy are working in there, cooking stuff. I said, put it all down. Just put the lid on it and everything. Come in. So they come in there, and I'm good. So I go, come here, look, look at this. I go, and look at the, get to the point here now, look. So they saw the shot, they were like, wow. I said, wait, no, no, wait. And we we'll listen very carefully. It's, I got it on film. And then I said, freeze frame, look. Look at this face. And then look at this one. And then this one. And then this one over here. There's like all these people, five faces, and a finger pointing up. Just, does any of you ever see the movie Next with Nicolas Cage? When, you know, he's there and, and these guys are looking at the security cameras and they're going, I think he's, he's rigged it, he's rigged it in some way. And they, they go, and then as soon as they're talking about him, as soon as they're thinking of him on the camera, he turns and he looks, and he goes, look at this, he's looking. It's like he knows we're talking about him. Yeah, yeah, because all the characters are reflections of our mind. And occasionally you get these beautiful, like those little scenes from Truman Show or Next, or in this case, a 45, 49, second shot of some guy filming this miraculous over the head Hail Mary thing with a big grin on the kid's face so he knows exactly he's just in the glory of the miracle you know he's winging it up there without even seeing it and then you can see it all is there and then everybody 
comes running to him, bumping up against him, you know, they want to just touch him, you know, because it's almost like, yeah, 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 it's like, it both, the opposing coach, he's thrilled, the opposing players, they're all, <laughs> they're all swept up in it, they're all, forget competition, <laughs> forget comparison, forget winning and losing, it's a miracle. And they're all there in it, and it's all one mind. And if you've got the eyes to see, you can even pick out those little, little pieces of, of the reflections of like, it's one mind. When, when one, two, three, four, five of them on the whole shot, on the whole court, we're looking, you know, simultaneously up, and the finger pointing back, it's like, come on, can you see that? So that's what we're looking at here. We, you know, we're just calling on the miracle to start to see that everything without exception is the reflection of our mind. And if someone or something reflects a doubt, or a fear, or a hurt, or a lack, or something back to us, then that's our snub. That's our snub. That's, that's right where we've got to do the forgiveness work. Because, you know, it's like that that song I quote from Elisa Moore, that, that workbook lesson, Myself is Rule of the Universe, um, it is impossible to, for anything to come to me unbidden by myself. Even in this world, it is I that rule my destiny. What happens is what I desire, and what does not occur is what I do not want to happen. Gosh, that's snublessness if I've ever heard of it. That is true snublessness. You know, there cannot be a snub in there. If everything happens to me, there's nothing that comes unbidden, that it's like my whole perception of the whole universe is just what I want it to be. How can I be a victim if everything is just the way I want it to be? And only if the ego tries to pull out a scrap and say, oh, huh, huh, it would be good. My life would be so much easier and better if it wasn't for this little snub here, and this one snub there, and a little distraction here, and a little scrap here and there, that's just totally denying the all-encompassing power of who we are, the all-encompassing power of our mind. So you can see that this is a great opportunity to really get into the real subtleties of forgiveness that go way beyond the comparisons or, you know, I mean, I, I have to laugh how I'm just, like, I just look at that and I see a headline and I go, what is the greatest basketball shot in history? You know, is it a slam dunk? Is it a da 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 da? It's some big kid, big chubby kid <laughs> that's, just, that's absolutely clueless. And yet it turns into, oh, like I could slow it down, <laughs> replay it, you know. And you can see it, you can see, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, the Spirit's like using it as a little teaching tool, 40, 45 second teaching tool, you know, it's all there. Just all we have to do is have the eyes to see it. Yeah.